bolt that has never been written. Untie it and bring it here immediately. They went away and they found a bolt tied near the door. Oh, I'm sorry, and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are they doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and we'll bring it back here immediately. They went and found the colt tied near the door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And if you'll just hold your palms up like this. I, I love it when people hold their other palms up. Today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let us pray. We praise you, O oh God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we entered a holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread their garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross. So that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. We will sing our processional hymn, All Glory, Lot, and Honor. <laughs> Oh, glory, Lord, and
as you enter, if, if you don't know that this is Palm Sunday, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> we had a wonderful crew decorating yesterday, and so we just want to say thank you for all the work that they put in, and it is a blessing to have you here this morning. I just want to, let me see, I met Diane. Diane, just, if you could just put your hand up for a sec. There's Diane right there. Um, Diane is a, a recent transplant all the way from Indio, right? All the way from Indio. Yeah. Um, and so she just moved recently to Sun Lakes. And I, I told her, I said, I don't know anyone that lives in Sun Lakes. <laughs> yeah, if you live in Sun Lakes, just raise your hand. There you go, now I got it, okay, now you understand? Okay, all right. And so, uh, Diane, it's nice to have you here this morning. Let us continue our worship with that prayer today. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection. Let us pray. Eternal God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. He who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And again, we're blessed with our special music from Ernest and Judith. Okay. 
And some people believe that they wanted to be saved from the Romans because they didn't like them and they were uh, extremely punished and everything. And other people, maybe they were thinking, save us so that we could live rightly in all those kind of things. Now, when we talk about God saving us, God saved us from flesh. Sin? Sin, that's a good thing. And in there is a promise of eternal friends. And so, uh, have you ever been to a party? What? A party. Yes. What's the best part of a party? Yes, it's kind of fun because you can go and sit up wherever and watch bands go by, and sometimes there's floats, and then there's cars and all kinds of stuff, and then there's horses, and then there's people have to come back to the horses. No one's ever had that job, I think. And it's all kind of fun, yeah. And then after it's over, there's no smoke. Yeah. I don't get it. When I was growing up, I was going to tell you, this is, I grew up on camera, and my father, every year, I think he would wake us up about two or three in the morning, and he would go to Pasadena. And what parades in Pasadena? The Rose Parade. The Rose Parade, yeah. And so we'd sit on the curb, and we'd watch that. And we'd look at my dad and say, why did you wake us up? <laughs> <laughs> the part I like the best, I think, in parades are the bands. I love to see the marching bands. How many of you are really in the marching bands? How many of you went to the just the pretty close? How many of you don't wake up on New Year's Day and watch it? Okay, all right. So they're kind of fun, so that's what this was. It was a big celebration, but something happened for us the week yesterday. To Jesus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So people were shouting, so I don't know if I didn't shout. Yeah. So, this is a big to see. Most of the the So, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad we can start off on the right foot. And hopefully, uh, what we got on Thursday night and Friday night, and we're going to do some of the good things that are nice to God loves us. Okay, let's start there. Let's start. First, uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for the beauty of this day. Well, we thank you that this is the day that Jesus starts the process of moving toward his own death and his resurrection. We thank you that he willingly did that for us to show us his us. So we thank you for your love and your grace and your peace. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Today, the reading comes to us from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Word of God, word of life. As we prepare to listen and to study God's word this morning, let's focus our centering hearts and our minds as we sing the centering prayer. Alleluia, Alleluia. 
sitting there watching a parade you don't even know that it's kind of over you just see that maybe there's police cars at the back or everyone's walking in the street and you kind of go oh I guess the parade's over um, and sometimes there's some extra little horse people there to clean up a little bit but um, that's just kind of the end of it now of course at the Rose Parade what they do is they take the floats off to Victory Park there in Pasadena and they and they're there and so people can come by for about two or three days and you can enjoy well, what happens is, as you can tell, sometimes it's very warm and those flowers start to whip very quickly. And it's about three days, they've got to get those floats out of there because it's just gonna look like a real dead mess. The end of a parade, it's kind of interesting. And as I was reading the text again about this parade, this Palm Sunday parade, um, it's interesting the way Mark just kind of finishes it up for us. As everyone's shouting, and then it just says, and then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And he looked around at everything. And at already being late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And that's the end of it. Everyone picked up probably their coats off the ground. I'm sure they left the palms all over the place. And they just kind of went home. And that was the end of it. So it's not that exciting of an ending of the story there. But we know, of course, the story continues on. So it tells us, and Mark tells us, is that Jesus entered Jerusalem. I was doing a lot of study on this, and I was looking at pictures and everything, because uh, we had the chance to go to Israel in, in 1992. And I'm not sure if you've ever seen pictures of, of the temple there, but if you look at the temple grounds from the east side, there's a gate right in the middle there. That's called the Golden Gate. And for some people, they think that that's where Jesus uh, went in on Palm Sunday. And I says, I'm not so sure about that. Because it says that Jesus entered Jerusalem. I think Jesus went in another way, and I think Jesus made his way around a little bit there. And I honestly think in my heart of hearts that Jesus entered Jerusalem through the Sheep Gate. Not the Golden Gate, but the Sheep Gate. It makes more sense to me. The Lamb of God would enter the temple grounds through the Sheep Gate. And that's what it says there is that Jesus went to Jerusalem, he went around, and then he went into the temple. At this point, I could kind of picture that Jesus is standing there, and maybe the 12 disciples are somewhere behind him. But he's standing there, and he's all alone. Because as it says there, it says, and when he had looked around at everything. Can you picture Jesus standing there in the temple grounds, and he's just looking around? One of the writers I was reading about, he says it's like a, a sweeping gaze. He just looks around. Instead of looking at it like things like this, it's, it's called the landscape view. And he looks around. Of course, he sees some people there, but not too many people, because it's late. 
He can see maybe some priests going into the temple. He can see the temple itself. He can see the tall building that is called the Holy of Holies, where God is dwelling, according to them. And he looks around. And he just takes it in. And then it says, Mark says, as it was already late. Late. How many of you are accused of being late all the time? Yeah, there's a couple of us, right? I have to tell you this quick story. When I was in seminary, I was taking uh, systematic theology. And they had a, a German theologian that was with us for this time. And he was German, German. I can say that because I'm German, okay? And he would, he would talk with a German accent and everything. And so one time, one of my friends came in late. In fact, it was about 15 minutes late. It was pretty late. And so the professor, you know, he's giving his lecture all out, and this person walks in. And this is what the professor does. He just stares at him. He just stops and stares. And of course, there's only one seat left, and where is that? Right in front, right? He stares at him and just watches him. And my friend, I knew who it was, he said, uh, good morning. It was 9 o'clock. 9.50. Good morning. The professor looks at his watch. Good morning. Looks like afternoon to me. At 9.15 in the morning. Late. It's already late. And Jesus knows that. Of course what Mark is saying is that it's late in the day. And it's been a long day. It's late in the day, but it's also late meaning it's time. We talked last week about the hour and what that means in the Bible, but today Jesus is, is it's late. And he looked around the temple with this sweeping gaze and just took it all in. And now I know that it was Jesus that gave Kenny Loggins the word to his song. We may never pass this way again. And it's true. And Jesus knew. The disciples behind Jesus didn't know. No one in that temple knew, but Jesus knew. No one else knew what was going to happen, but Jesus knew. In fact, Jesus has known for most of his lifetime. In Luke's gospel, it's chapter 9, verse 51, where Jesus really focuses the disciples when he says, when the days grew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem in Caesarea Philippi. This was going to be Jesus' final journey to Jerusalem. And three times at least, Jesus tells the disciples about his death and his resurrection. At least three times. Jesus knows. The disciples, it takes them almost until Pentecost until they fully understand. Jesus knows. Jesus knew about the cult that was tied. No one else knew about it, but Jesus says, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a cold tide over there, just on tide, tell them that you're taking it. And it almost sounds like they're stealing it, doesn't it? It's like, what are you, why are you on time? It's like, well, uh, uh, um, Jesus, uh, oh, okay. Jesus knows. Jesus knew about the crowds. Jesus knew that this was to fulfill scripture, to enter on Palm Sunday like this. Jesus knew. Jesus knew, even on that day, that a couple days from then, he was going to go in and cleanse the temple. And he knew that that was going to be a problem. Jesus knew that the Jewish leaders had a greater and greater problem with Jesus and wanted him dead. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew on that Sunday that Judas would betray him. He knew that. Jesus knew that this would be his last Passover with the disciples. Jesus knew on that night, that Thursday night, that he was taking Passover to a whole new level when he shared the bread and the wine and told them that this was his body and his blood. Jesus knew. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him. And he knew that Peter would try to fight his way out of it. Jesus knew that the disciples would not stay awake in the garden. Jesus knew that the Sanhedrin and the Jewish leaders would have a mock trial 
And then Pilate wouldn't know what to do, and he would do whatever the crowd wanted. Jesus knew. Jesus knew that this crowd that shouted Hosanna would shout crucify him, and that he would be. Jesus knew. Jesus knew all of this, and he saw all of this. Jesus knew that it would end up with a cross. And it was on that cross that Jesus took a sweeping gaze, a landscape view. He looked around and he saw all the people gathered around the cross that day. Jesus looked around with a sweeping gaze and he sees all people of all time and in every place. Jesus takes a sweeping gaze and he even sees you and me. Jesus knows and Jesus sees and he still says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus knew that this was the plan of salvation. Thy will be done. Jesus knew that this final journey was not just about coming into Jerusalem and being honored as a king, riding on a donkey or a pony, but he knew that the journey would continue on to the place called the Skull, Golgotha. On that Sunday, when everyone is hailing Jesus as king, Jesus knew in the midst of the palms there was a cross. Do you see it there? In the midst of the palms, the cross. Jesus saw it, Jesus knew it, but the rest of the world had no clue. And so the question for us today is, do you see it? Jesus sees it, and Jesus sees with the eyes of love. Jesus sees beyond the cross to the empty tomb. Can you see beyond the cross to the empty tomb? Jesus knew that this was his final journey and he sees it all with that sweeping gaze and he continues no matter what. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, Right on to the night. Look down with sad and wondering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Bow your meek head to mortal pain. Then take, O Christ, your power and reign. The final journey has begun. And Jesus is with us until we take our final journey and until Jesus sees us face to face. Let us continue the journey of life. Amen.
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. As we turn to our moments of prayer, uh, we'll sing our prayers out to set our hearts and minds. Lord, listen to your children pray. Again, we'll sing it once uh, with music and the second time with that. <laughs> The Prayers of Intercession. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, O oh God. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice, sustain soldiers, and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O oh God. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals, 
those who prepare meals, all who offer support and grief, hear us, O oh God. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God. And Lord God, we thank you for your great mercy and your love that you shower upon us. We ask that your peace and healing be with these that we pray for today. Avis, Marion, Larry, Harriet, Don, Connie, John and Jan, Marilyn, Gwen, Jack and Carol, Judy, Barbara, Glenn and Nona, John, Faith, for Diane's husband, and for all those who are affected by COVID-19, and those who we mention in our hearts at this time. May your healing touch be upon them, and may your healing touch be upon all those who care for these family members and also uh, medical teams, doctors, and nurses and others. We thank you for the health that you give to us, and we pray that this health could be for all. Hear us, O oh God. Lord of life and of celebration today, we pray for these who are celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. We pray for Marlene Bowman and Carol Baker. Lord God, continue to shine the light of your joy upon their pathway as they celebrate these days. Hear us, O oh God. And we thank you for the possibilities that you give us with vaccines and other medical treatments that as we uh, continue to move forward, that we're going to move out of this pandemic. And we just pray that uh, your peace and healing will be upon communities as we open up even more and more and as we return to a life that you give to us. But help us to make this life be one that is renewed and full of joy as we move out of this pandemic. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, asking all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we're going to have the offering brought up, but it just occurred to me that with all the excitement of coming in and processing in, I'm not sure if everyone picked up their little communion cup. So if you didn't get one, they are in the back there. If you need one, Izzy, can you do two things at once? I'm not sure if you can, but if you need one, just raise your hand. Izzy will get you one. Does anybody need one? Okay, there is a couple. Okay, I, I knew that that was the case. Okay. Izzy is now learning why we have recreated with two arms and two hands. <laughs> She's doing a great job. All right. And Grace needs one right there too, okay. Oh, you got one, Grace? Okay, Grace Grace does that one. She she just said that she told everyone she sat on it, so. <laughs> okay, all right, well, thank you for helping. Okay, great. Okay, all right. <laughs> we have all day, don't we? I mean, I, I want it. No problem, okay. And just in case you're wondering, there's another offering plate there. If you forgot it, you can do it on the way out, too. We, we think of everything here. <laughs> All right. Let us pray our offering prayer. 
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. We ask this in one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with our invitation to communion. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed in right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with the choir of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. With the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us, saying from our hearts, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your Spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Jesus Christ for good works, chosen and holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Continue with our announcements. <coughs> Let's see.
It's wonderful to see such a nice crowd for Palm Sunday and Hosanna. We are celebrating and, and rejoicing. So we have a very busy week coming up, a, a wonderful week filled with, with all the uh, celebrations of Holy Week and, and also the sorrows. Uh, beginning the first uh, event, beginning on Wednesday, would be our Java and Jesus Places of the Passion Bible Study. This will be the final study, and it is on Zoom, Zoom only, so join us. If you need a link, let us know. And then 1 p.m. will be the choir rehearsal here at church. So everybody's invited. If you were singing today, please join them. They would love to have you. Thursday is Monday Thursday worship, and it will be in person, Zoom, or also Facebook Live, and that begins at 6.30 p.m. Friday, for Good Friday services, you have two options. There is a daytime option at 12 p.m., which will be in person here in the sanctuary, Zoom, and on Facebook Live. And then in the evening at 6.30 p.m., we have a in-person in the sanctuary service as well as Facebook Live. Zoom will not be offered at the 6.30 evening session. Sunday is going to be a wonderful day. We have a new option for worshiping with us for Easter. This year, we will have a 6.30 a.m. sunrise service. It will be outdoor, weather, weather permitting. And it, it, looking forward to that and having a wonderful service with the sun rising with us. 9 a.m. will be a traditional service inside the sanctuary, following with an Easter egg hunt that all the, the kids are welcome to attend at 10 a.m. So that's the events this week, quite busy. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. This is our house, this is God's house, and we all wanna take care of it. Sadly, we forgot to we forgot to hire a housekeeper. So it's our job to take care of our house. Um, a couple little things, the flowers behind us, we have a couple vases behind us. We're always looking for people to volunteer and it's a really cool way to celebrate somebody, to honor somebody or to remember someone or an event or just to say thank you. Nice way to pretty up our church. Another thing we need to do to take care of our normal housekeeping is just to beautify our, our sanctuary and get ready for Easter. We have Easter lilies available um, for purchase for Sunday. Now, sadly, I had last heard that the number was pretty low, just to let you know. Um, I don't know if it's still at 10, but the last number I'd heard that we only had 10 reservations for uh, our purchases of Easter lilies. So we really wanna see this sanctuary beautiful and, and filled with all those wonderful flowers. Um, normally we like to line everything. We won't be able to do that if we don't get our numbers increased. So stop in the back or write on a piece of paper. Sandy will be glad to, to take anything she can get, get in the office. Email her, um, the cost is $10 per plant. And they come from our wonderful florist who really does a good job for us, flowers, et cetera. And they keep the prices really low for us. Uh, let's see here. Another housekeeping issue is we are doing the Easter egg hunt, but we can't have an Easter egg hunt without donations. So we are looking for candy. I believe Melody still needs a little bit of candy back there. No, are we good? Okay, never mind. Sorry, stop the presses. We're good on candy and Easter eggs, so we're all set there. So just bring the kids on Sunday. And let's see here. Last couple things is upcoming, some fun stuff. Now that we've done the housekeeping and all that stuff, um, we want you to come join us. Come hang out at Book Club. Book Club will be meeting on Tuesday, April 20th at 3 p.m. We're gonna meet in person and also have Zoom available if anyone would like. That will be um, discussing Lipstick Grace. If you need communion cups, please let us know or let your shepherd know. Again, choir rehearsal, just wanna plug that because we all love our music here. And um, one last thing, the messenger. If anyone has a, an article to put in the messenger, it's your, your publication. So please send something into Sandy or if you just need to get the messenger in print form or digital, let the office know. And I believe that covers all the good stuff. Does anybody have anything? No. Oh, and then also on April 11th, we do have a congregational meeting. It's really important that you make it out for that 
because we will be discussing capital improvements and there's been some other additional expenses and things we need to take care of. So I hope to see you all here throughout the week. For those of you who've already gotten your vaccine and gotten twice or two of them, thank you very much on behalf of the community. I'll let you know that Jen and I are getting ours on Thursday because, well, we're so young. We had to wait. And some of you are blessed that you can't get it until like the 15th. <laughs> anyway, thank you for that because the majority of people that are here in the sanctuary have had their vaccine. And so thank you for that. And thank you for socially distance as much as we can uh, in the morning here. Um, I just want to uh, say that um, and I sent out two emails and if you're not getting my emails, let, let us know in the office and we'll add your email to my list. But um, I'm, I'm giving out these little crosses and I don't think Kathy, you haven't gotten yours yet. So on the way up, make sure and then Rosemary, uh, you got to get yours on the ways out too. Phil, I gave Phil his this morning because he was one of the Lou Hickman, I know that he's online there. Uh, Justine and Kristen, um, one week it was the two of you playing tag team. And, and Marlene Bowman also was one of the first ones. And so these are the people that open up my emails of the fastest. And you're sitting there thinking, you know when we do that? Pastor Dave knows all. <laughs> That's right. So, um, so and again, uh, if you were here yesterday helping out, just raise your hand. Give these people a lot of applause. Say thank you. Um, I don't think Terry Bebas, is Terry here this morning? Terry, you get the extra gold star because yesterday when everyone else left, he was still out in the parking lot with his, he was still working. So thank you. Yeah. And I know that you and Carl made the river look beautiful out there in front. So as you leave, make sure you go look at that beautiful, beautiful river. That, that right, Carl? Yes, and I, I got shown that. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, um, I'm going to run down the aisle there because some of you try to sneak out before you say uh, goodbye to me. So I'm going to try to make the door before you do. I don't know if it's going to work. Or not, but we'll see. All right. So our dismissal. God is good all the time. All the time. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks to God.